Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Xiao Xiao, vigilant Tak Xiao Liwe, was on a mission. A mission to deliver a package to a room in the Bang Shuin. He made his way up the stairs. His mind focused on the task at hand. He was stopped previously by Virgil Death. And she asked him to do this. And even though he despised doing these things, he had no choice. Because he owed her a favor and he didn't want to say no to her. And that's why he was making his way to the guest room. Walking down the hallway with purpose, he knocked on the door and waited. Hoping that the guest would answer quickly so he could be on his way. When the door opened, he was surprised to see you standing there, looking disheveled in your pajamas. Shao, what are you doing here? You ask, rubbing the sleep from your eyes. I'm here to deliver a package, Shao replied, holding up the small brown paper parcel. You took the package from him, and as you did, Shao's eyes drifted down to the exposed skin. That was showing from your loose-fitting pajamas. Is everything all right? You ask him, noticing the way he was looking at you. He quickly averted his gaze, his face turning red. Yes, everything is just fine. I should head on now. Without another word, he turned and disappeared down the hallway, leaving you standing there in confusion. And as he walked away, he couldn't help but feel embarrassed. Shao, conqueror of demons. General Alitus was reduced to a blushing mess by a simple interaction with a guest. That's exactly when he made a mental note to avoid any more errands at the Wang Shu Inn in the future. Skirmish. Skirmish was always focused on his own thing, not caring much for the people around him. But for some reason, Kusanelli was able to catch his attention. She knew exactly how to make him do what she wanted. And maybe that's because he really cared about her. She was someone important to him. Basically, the closest person he has to a family figure. After she started taking care of him so much. Just hear me out. If we can get... Suddenly, the sound of a door slamming interrupted them, causing the traveler, Paimon, Skirmish, and Kusanelli to turn their heads in surprise. He burst into the room, panting heavily and looking flustered. Skirmish couldn't help but stare at you in your disheveled state. Oh, sorry, sorry, I overslept and... He trailed off, trying to catch her breath. You had rushed all the way up to the sanctuary. After realizing you had forgotten about the plan that he had made, you were still wearing your pajamas, which earned you a few strange looks from people on your way up. When Skirmish Ram looked up from examining your body, you noticed his face turning red. Really, it wasn't that usual that you would see. You ask, confused, and suddenly, he jumps up from his seat startling Paimon and everyone else. This is ridiculous. I'm out of here. And he storms out, his cheeks completely red. Sino. As Sino stepped into the main building, he couldn't help but wonder what you were doing at the moment. He was brought back to reality by Paimon screeching, and he turned to see Candace walking towards them. Hey, look! It's Candace, Paimon exclaimed, pointing in their direction. Candace greeted them, seeing that she was finished with their errands and was going to return to the main building, and so nodded in silence. And as they entered, she placed her bags on the table and quickly gestured towards the couch in the corner. Shh, look who's sleeping, Candace whispered, placing a finger on her lips. His eyes saw Candace's finger, 
landing on you, half asleep on the couch. Your pajamas were nearly falling off your shoulder and hips, causing him to feel flustered. He quickly turned his head, trying to regain his composure. Sino, Sino, Hammond's voice interrupted his thoughts. We're leaving now. Are you gonna come with us? He shook his head and replied, No, I have other matters I need to catch up with as well. You can go on ahead. And Sina turned back to you, only to realize that Candace was the only one left. You know, you should tell her how you feel. His eyes reddened. What? No, I can't do that. Why not? You clearly like her. She replied with a smirk. It's not that simple. Besides, I don't want to make things awkward between us. Candace shrugged. Suit yourself. But if you change your mind, I'm always here to give you a little push. He smiled weakly, sitting down in the chair next to you, watching as she leaved and you slept peacefully. He couldn't help but wonder how it would be like if he told you how he felt. But for now, he was content to just watch over you. Eventually, he drifted off to sleep. The General Mahmatara sleeping in the chair next to you, and a blanket covering your whole body. Venti. Venti stumbled down the streets of Mondstadt, his steps on city from a night of heavy drinking at the tavern. And as he made his way back home, his heart was filled with excitement at the thought of seeing you again. As he opened the door, he saw you sitting on the couch. Rest in your pajamas. He couldn't help but smile at the sight of you. Feeling a rush of affection wash over him. Hey there. He looks so pretty and cute in those pajamas. You blush at his words. Feeling a warmth spread throughout your body. Thank you. He said. Feeling a bit shy under his gaze. Minty then sat down on the couch. Wrapping his arm around her shoulders. I missed you tonight. I wish you could have come with me to the tavern. You laid into his embrace, feeling the warmth of his body against yours. I know, but I had a long day at work, and just wanted to relax. He nodded, understanding your need to rest. Well, I'm just glad you're here now. He said softly, kissing you on the lips. Let's just spend the rest of our night together. All right, Leon? All right, Venti.